Good morning, wilderness. Um, welcome to another worship service this morning on this beautiful fourth Sunday of Easter. So I invite you, uh, if you have the elements and so choose, we are going to be celebrating the Eucharist today. So make sure you have your, your bread and wine or, um, you know, Sara Lee bread and grape juice or Gatorade and crackers, you know, whatever you have. Uh, I have faith that God is able to work in and through those elements to provide us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So uh, we will be receiving communion this Sunday if you choose to participate in that. So um, <clears throat> with that, I invite you to pre prepare your hearts and your minds for worship. Let's take a couple moments to gather ourselves. Our service this morning begins with a brief order for confession and forgiveness. You can follow along on your screen. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So I invite you to take a few moments to contemplate sin in your life. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, uh, another week uh, in quarantine, staying safe at home, all that, that jazz that we're getting accustomed to, if, if not comfortable with. Um, I know this isn't easy being stuck, uh, and for those of us who aren't stuck at home, uh, but are out working and, um, and are, are scared of, of this disease, that is is so rampant and and so unpredictable. Um, I I pray for each and every one of you uh, every day in my prayer time in my devotion time, and hope that you are including me in your prayers. I know I've gotten several notes from members and phone calls, uh, which I I dearly appreciate. So uh, thank you for all of that. A uh, couple of announcements. First off is council is, uh, has, they, we've been discussing uh, through email about the next steps, when restrictions are lifted, when we can gather again as a community, what steps we're going to take. So um, we have plans that are, are starting. We've been very fortunate to have very wise and learned individuals uh, like Carrie Parker from Wisconsin Council of Churches, 
uh, directing us and guiding us in that process. So um, with that, though, uh, there are a couple things that when we do return to the church, to the uh, communal gathering space in the church building, um, we're not going straight back to, to how things had been. Uh, there are going to be some some changes, uh, so I encourage you to um, to continue to uh, listen for those those updates. Uh, one of which is uh, when we do return, likely we're all going to be wearing masks uh, for the the safety of everyone. Uh, we'll be wearing masks. Obviously, won't be shaking hands. Um, we are also instructed that as as um, as effective as a cough is in transmitting uh, moisture particles and, and therefore the, the virus, um, that a cough has nothing on singing. So um, finally have a, a pastoral care reason not to sing in front of you, uh, at least not without a, a face mask on. So um, just be advised that uh, if we do resume uh, when we do resume worship, uh, it's likely that we're going to have a lot more instrumental music. So we're going to be relying on, on folks that can uh, play songs for us, uh, if it means recordings, if it if Elsie is willing to, to join us again, I hope she is, uh, to play some beautiful piano music, uh, if we can get some other talented individuals in the community uh, to be able to provide some more instrumental music. Um, probably what we're going to lean on in the beginning and then also uh, learning to sing with masks on so that we aren't risking the health of others um, or our own health <clears throat> so um, plus distancing and you know, we'll have family units per pew with um, blocked off pews in between also talking about doing outdoor services kind of reduces the risk as well so um, with the beautiful weather we're having lately, hopefully that continues. And um, so while you are waiting to, to gather again in person, I also in, encourage you uh, to go ahead and look through that, that garage or basement and, and find some comfortable lawn chairs um, for when we are able to gather again in worship because probably going to start outside for most of us uh, if it's good weather like it is lately. So... Um, with that, um, I also invite you to share any news that you have, um, thoughts, concerns, uh, prayer requests in the, the comments below. Uh, invite you to, to send me messages, um, check in with others. Um, so feel free to do that. And then I invite you now to sing together our entrance, entrance hymn, Gather Us In.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us continue with our Kyrie. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day, which you should find on your screen. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with knowledge and understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from Acts, the second chapter, verses 42 to 47. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread and prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Here ends our reading. Our psalm this morning is the 23rd psalm. I invite you to follow along with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second lesson this morning is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 to 25. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten but entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Here ends our reading. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to John, 
the tenth chapter. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. All right, folks. So, the Good Shepherd. That is our focus for today's readings. We hear in uh, our, our readings about both the, the shepherd in our 23rd Psalm who leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil. We hear of the suffering that um, Jesus endured and that we are being called to follow in as well. We hear of the first followers of Jesus and how they gathered together. They shared all that they had, they gave of their abundance, so that those who didn't have enough would be satisfied. And then we come to this, this text for today from John, that talks about Jesus as the gate. <clears throat> it's interesting that you know, we call the fourth Sunday of Easter the, the Good Shepherd Sunday, when Jesus doesn't call himself a shepherd, in our gospel text. He says that he's the gate, that there's a, a shepherd that comes through and, and you know, guides the, the sheep, but but he's not the shepherd. He's the, the gate that the, the shepherd comes through. So um, just want to kind of ponder that for a second there. Uh, and yet we know that God spoke through Jesus, that um, our, our Creator, our Father in heaven, uh, used, used Jesus in order to get across what he wished for us. Uh, and likewise, after, after Jesus' death and resurrection, um, after instructing all of his, his disciples, they continued on that tradition as well. They, they continued in and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, all that he had did and said and done, uh, all that all that he was. So they continued on that tradition, and um, we as as children of God are are called both to listen to that continuation and also to uh, to join in with that, to continue to share God's voice through the scriptures, God's instruction for us through the words of Jesus, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Um, it's actually uh, one of the, the biggest joys and the biggest scares of, of being a minister is that that's your official position, is that you are a, a shepherd to your flock. And uh, sometimes it's, it's easy to get caught up in our own voice and not hear the voice of the one who shepherds us. Um, and I think that's a, a good reminder, uh, certainly for, for pastors, uh, but also for, for lay ministers, lay leaders, 
uh, for even just everyone who, who sits in the pew, uh, for those discerning their faith, uh, trying to learn and grow in their faith, which should be all of us. Uh, this is a good reminder that uh, to, to ponder in, in our lives, whose voice is it really that we are listening to and we're following? And, um, you know, our, our gospel tells us that Jesus, uh, the gate, is the means through which the shepherd, the good shepherd, comes through. And that the sheep know his voice and listen to him and follow him. So, <clears throat> are we listening to the right voices in today's world? And especially with all the news going on, you know, there's a, a lot of hype on, you know, no matter your political affiliations, there's, there's a lot in the news that is troubling for us. And that can kind of bog us down. So I would invite you to remember that if that's the only voice you're hearing, it is going to kind of drag you down. So it's important for us in this time, well, in all times, really, uh, to also listen to that voice of God by reading through scripture, by uh, praying to God, by listening in that prayer time as well. Um, if, if you're anything like me, you're really good at talking to God and not always so good at listening for God's voice coming through that process. So I encourage you to do that. Um, and it's, you know, in, in this reading, it's easy to see how this applies to today's world. Um, not just, you know, with the virus, you know, we could easily say that, you know, that the, the thieves come in and, and steal life from, from the, the sheep, from the flock. Um, pretty easy to connect that to the, the coronavirus going around, you know, stealing life, uh, whereas... God calls to us and wants for us to have life and have it abundantly. Um, so those those method uh, measures that we're taking now to to be safe at home, to to follow recommendations by our elected officials, our leaders. Um, Wisconsin Council of Churches has um, has looked at some of the other states that that are opening up restrictions. And said, you know, there are organizations that, oh, religious organizations that are, are seeing this and saying, even though you're giving us this ability, we don't think it's safe yet. And so we are going to, to remain uh, closed with our buildings. Um, our hearts and our minds and our faith will still be open, uh, but our buildings will not. And so as as church together uh, we also have to discern that as well for us that uh, even when voices in the world might be saying all right let's 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 all go back out in the community and and go back to business as usual that uh, is that really what we're being called to do or are we being called to create a new world uh, hopefully a better world to live in one that is more equitable, one that is is more understanding, uh, more inspired by God, and and recognizes the the humanity and, and the divinity that is held within all of us. So uh, whether that means uh, wearing masks outside in in shopping and um, even in in playtime when when we are opened up, you know, uh, going out, still taking those precautions, or or if it means choosing staying at home, even though things are available, you know, that's not an easy decision for anyone to make, um, but it's a decision we shouldn't take lightly. Um, but also, you know, it's easy to to relate this to the virus. You know, obviously, the virus is a thief, uh, stealing life from us, stealing our our freedom from us. Um, stealing uh, our loved ones from us. But there's also more layers to it as well. Um, 
we've seen the responses from people in in responding to this virus uh, some voices that uh, clearly care more about themselves or or their their success their um, their relevance than they do about um, those that um, work for them you know we've seen some some business leaders that are, are not making wise decisions and putting their employees at risk, uh, putting their community members at risk, putting their loved ones at risk. Um, and we've also seen the opposite too. We've seen the compassion coming through of, of people that are, are sharing their, their skills, their talents, people that are making masks for others, people that are sharing music on, on social media, people that are writing letters. Um, it's one of the, the most beautiful things is a lot of my colleagues have said that they feel more connected to a lot of, uh, a lot of people in their lives than, than they did before uh, because there's something very personal in sitting down and writing a letter. There's something um, personal in, in picking up the phone and just calling and saying, hey, how's it going? And um, I'm hoping you will see uh, more of that from me in the coming days. Uh, and I know I've seen it from a lot of you, the, the care and concern and love for your neighbors. Um, so I encourage you uh, in this time, uh, it, is, it is a troubling time for us. It is a scary and and chaotic time, but it's also an opportunity for us to go back, to listen for that voice. Listen for God's voice calling to us both through scripture and through our neighbors, encouraging us on. And it's a reminder to us that like the 23rd Psalm, that uh, we aren't going through this alone, but we are being shepherded by the Good Shepherd by Jesus Christ, that we are, are not alone in our, our trials and our travels through the darkest valleys of our lives, but we are accompanied and protected and cared for by the one who was willing to die for us on a cross in order that we might have eternal life. So I encourage you to continue caring for your neighbor to continue listening for God's voice and to continue being the amazing people that you are. Thank you. I invite you now to sing with me our, well, I'll sing it off screen. I won't subject you to that. But I invite you to sing together our hymn of the day, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us.
Together as the United Church, we confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join with the people of God in all times and places, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Shepherd and God, we thank you for the educational ministries of your church. Enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, and learning sites. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creating God, we praise you for those who maintain and operate farm equipment, for those who plant and harvest crops, for local farmers markets, and for those involved in agriculture of any kind. Strengthen their hands as they feed the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want. Bid the nations to return to your paths of righteousness and inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort in God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys, overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. We pray especially for all those who are impacted by this disease, for those who care for them, for those who mourn, for those who must be away, and for all those whom we name aloud in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work food pantries, and feeding ministries in our congregations and local communities. May none of our neighbors lack for basic needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice. You have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for their lives, O faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold, and confident, with bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care, through Christ our Lord. Amen. People of God, may the peace of Christ be with you always. And let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, 
our time, and our possessions. Signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I invite you now, if you so choose, to receive the Eucharist. Uh, if you have others with you, um, please uh, share that with one another. Um, otherwise, you may administer to yourself. And remember that the body of Christ is broken for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, people of God, may Patamawas bless you and keep you. May Patamawas face shine on you and be gracious to you. May Patamawas look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit that makes us one. Amen and amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. But not before you join me in singing our sending hymn, God be with you till we meet again. <laughs>